We want to welcome all of you and thank you for joining us today for our virtual learning professional learning series. This is a webinar that is in a series that we provide to you in our virtual learning area. Uh, we certainly appreciate again, those of you who have joined us and we introduce our virtual team, Dr. Meg Foley and myself, Reggie Fox. And I will allow uh, Dr. Foley to give some greetings as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I see so many familiar names now and some new ones, which is exciting as we um, continue our professional learning series. Um, special thanks uh, to Mr. Reggie Fox, my colleague. He is taking on the, the main parts of presenting today. And so um, I'm really excited that you are here and I hope that you find the information valuable. Thank you, Meg, and appreciate, again, you joining us and uh, being a part of the team and always providing uh, uh, the service that we need to our folks in Virginia. Uh, and of course, these webinars are designed to provide you, school divisions and MOP, and those of you who are joining us uh, for information related to virtual learning uh, policies, procedures. And this is our, our mission, our goal, to provide you with this information uh, throughout the year. And so today on today's agenda, we want to just share some things about opening school, communication, enrollment, orientation, models of implementation, and then we have a poll that we would like for you all to complete. So we know that the excitement is in the air for going back to school, and we certainly welcome all of you uh, back to school as teachers, administrators are gearing up for a new school year. And some have started in August and some are starting after Labor Day. And we realize that different school divisions are on different schedules. We certainly, are, on behalf of our virtual learning team, extend to you the best, uh, very best for a healthy, safe, and productive school year. And we know with different school start dates, there's a possibility of enrollment being different for some participating in virtual learning. So on this slide, I've used this slide as an example to show you from the Virtual Virginia program that one cohort starts uh, in August and another cohort starts uh, August 24th, and then I could have a cohort starting after Labor Day, as we said, uh, and many different virtual programs. So uh, students should be mindful of any communications that are being given that apply to their particular group or cohort. Now, we know that the calendar is just one tool that's used for communicating, especially when the focus is centered around enrollment this time of year. So we want to use all forms of communication and, and it really is an expectation of all stakeholders. We know we need administrators, counselors, mentors, teachers, students, and parents, guardian. Uh, they all have an important pro, uh, role to play in communicating, especially in a virtual setting. We always try to be transparent. We don't want any surprises for any of those participating in virtual programs. And communicating uh, means regular attendance, progress, successes, uh, weaknesses, those um, that we need to communicate to parents, those things that are important. With enrollment, you've probably seen this in previous webinars, but we just wanted to reiterate that school divisions have different programs, whether students are taking courses part-time or full-time. The data that is produced from that enrollment gives us both a student count and a course count. We want to reiterate that students remain in their enrolling school divisions and ADM funding follows the student. Tuition would only apply in certain situations. There are uh, staff who provide services for students with disabilities, 504, English learners. Uh, those, uh, uh, those specialized services are still provided by the enrolling school division. Now I want to get your, your participation and have you involved in providing some reactions to this particular scenario. 
uh, parents are inquired about enrolling in a virtual school. And Dr. Foley and I are getting calls about that right now. Uh, the school, the local school division shared that the parents could enroll their child full time. Later, the parents find out that their child was no longer a student in the local school division. And the parents did not know that their child was now a student enrolled in a school division 200 miles away from where they live. They also didn't know that they would have to transport their child to a testing location, uh, maybe 100 miles from their home. So uh, let's hear your reactions with this particular scenario and talk about how, what are, what are important things that you see things that could be done to help facilitate uh, this in a more productive way. So you do have the ability to unmute yourselves and we do want to hear from you. So if you don't mind. Reggie, we have a chat comment saying okay. that obviously there needs to be better communication when enrolling. Yep, and here we have another one, better communication. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, communication uh, is key when we're talking about virtual settings. So, and that that's what you said, communicate. And, and we need to communicate the criteria, the policies with regard to enrollment, withdrawal, or transfer we will see that the student really is considered a transfer student. And we want to make sure that when we're communicating, we talk about the transfer of records for students and the communication should happen, whether it's a virtual Virginia program or multi-division online provider or your program. Uh, all of these things, grading, testing, specialized services, all of these things that impact our students' ability to be successful in a virtual program should be discussed. And all stakeholders should be informed about the enrollment in a virtual setting. So we know orientation and training is very important to help students be successful and have a positive and productive school year. So let's remember that sometimes this is a first time experience for students and other times students may just need a refresher if they've had an online course. So during the orientation period, of course, our teachers have been trained to facilitate this. Students and parents and mentors, facilitators, we all need training so that we uh, understand the expectations and responsibilities for each of our roles. Uh, there could be multiple opportunities for training and make sure that we consider all of the topics uh, that could be discussed for student success. Some of those examples could be the virtual format and the calendar as we discussed, technology requirements, textbook and materials, the AUP, how students conduct themselves online, grading policies, late work, and the progress that students make, uh, and the academic integrity, these things all have a, a vital impact on student success. Of course, providing a handbook is an excellent way to organize expectations and policies, procedures in one place. Whether this handbook exists in paper format, online, on a website, available for students to download during the orientation, it is a comprehensive way to present information that's vital so that students can be successful. Now, again, I'd like to solicit your input. What are some characteristics of a successful virtual student or what are some strategies that you use to ensure student success? So I am going to stop sharing for a moment so that we can delve into that a bit. Dr. Foley, I do see that there were more things in the chat and communicating in multiple ways, communication. Absolutely, I monitored and answered for you. <laughs> All right, so I think uh, the questions, what are some characteristics and what are some strategies students um, 
should feel when they have success in a virtual program. So I will allow you to, to read those if you wish. Yes, we have a lot coming in on this one, Reggie. Self-discipline, good stewards of time. Oh, I see we have good assigned mentors to every virtual student. That is a wonderful strategy. Intrinsically motivated, absolutely. Students meeting effective virtual learning learner criteria. It's wonderful to have criteria already set so that there's um, something to share with parents and other faculty members. Absolutely. Organizational system that works for the student, a wonderful strategy. Dedicate space for learning, absolutely. I think so many of us found that out when we um, started working from home, when school shut down and offices shut down. And so found that um, many of us who didn't really have a home office learned that we need that dedicated space as well, even as adults. I see also Reggie on the chat, student handbook, orientation course, get to know uh, the teacher documents, parents as coaches. That is a critical piece as well in ensuring, and Reggie spoke to that, the communication with, with the families is um, key to success, absolutely. Space again. A set criteria list. Oh, that's wonderful. So go ahead and share that um, they have um, a set criteria list for characteristics of successful learners. That's great. Oh, a levels of support from the school. That's great as well. What a wonderful strategy to, to help before it gets too late. Always being proactive in providing the supports and not letting it get to the critical part. Connecting with students through orientation and then follow up with mentors and counseling. Wonderful. So, yes. yes, that is great. You've shared many, uh, many of the things that we look for when trying to help students be successful. And we appreciate your responses uh, to those. And, and those successful characteristics of students who participate in virtual learning programs. We'll shift now to models of implementation. So with each virtual program, there are different models and ways for school divisions to deliver online programs and engage students in participating. So the chart that you see is provided by the Learning Accelerator in a July presentation. And this chart indicates various models that result from hybrid and fully virtual, whether it's individualizing, classroom-based, school-based, system run. So some divisions have their own uh, virtual programs, state-run programs like our Virtual Virginia program. Uh, and those that provide opportunities for those who may be out of district or even out of state for that matter. So what I've tried to do is simplify the models to just for our discussion purposes and ways that we integrate virtual learning into uh, our schools today. And that may be students participating in virtual courses completely from home, where the teachers are in a separate location, virtual location, and the students. Uh, and then the parent or guardian may be serving as the mentor. And we have some cases where students uh, take fully virtual courses from home. Then we may have an opportunity for students to take a course, of course, online, but then they may leave. They have a specific class period where they may leave and go to their locations, virtual locations to take their course. And the school counselor, there could be a facilitator who will serve as the mentor. And of course, the last model is where the student attends in person physically at school, but they go to a designated computer lab or another location to take their virtual course. And there is a mentor or facilitator who oversees that, that lab. And so as we engage all of our families and school, we, it made me think of this um, phrase that it takes a village to raise a child. And so I just wanted to talk about 
uh, each of the roles uh, in this village. And we know that our students need to understand the expectations. They need to log in, complete their courses regularly, and of course, have mutual respect by abiding by the AUP or code of conduct that they've signed. Our teachers are engaged in providing the instruction, assessing the student and communicating regularly with stakeholders. And our mentors serve as an important role because they are the liaison between the teachers, counselors, and parents. And they are the ones monitoring progress and reporting that or communicating that back to various stakeholders. There could be other support staff, those who are providing specialized services and accommodations. They have an important role in communicating back to the teacher, to the counselor, to the parent even in some cases. Our parents are our champions or advocates for students and communicate regularly with the teachers. And then of course, our counselors help with communicating and being that uh, mentor between uh, these facilitators, parents, and students. Being sure that they stay on top of helping students uh, in times of crisis or even providing students compliments when they're doing well online. So our, all of these are key players in our virtual village. So with some of the models that we've talked about, we wanted to, again, hear from you with models that you are using, particularly in your school divisions. So I am going to stop sharing. And again, if it would be great if we had someone who, who share uh, in person here on the screen something about your particular program and what you allow for students. So we do encourage you, if you don't wanna come off camera, that's fine, but you do have the ability to unmute yourselves. Does anyone have an online program out there? <laughs> People are very shy. Hey, Reggie, I don't mind to talk. I missed the first part of the question, though. Uh, just to share any model or what program that you are engaged in with students or school division. Oh, well, we are with Virginia Virtual Academy, Stride Incorporated, and we have several different district partners that we work with. And how do you provide those services to school divisions? What, what models do you use? So we have full-time virtual school students. Um, we have out of district students and we also have in district. We are partnered with Region 7 Academy to provide um, virtual, actually full-time and part-time virtual options for students in, in their districts. And then we provide full-time virtual options for um, several other divisions across the state. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Reggie, I see in chat that Melanie Hastings has shared virtual uh, Virginia for them. Of course, we hope that we have lots of virtual Virginia being shared um, across the state. So I will put up, uh, OK, Beth. Yes. You, sure. Sure. So I'm with CCPS Online. We are um, with Chester County Public Schools. We're kind of the high school virtual option. We have full time teachers. Um, students are enrolled concurrently with us in their main school building. Um, we have special education support, ELL support, et cetera. We deliver our instruction primarily asynchronous through Canvas. Um, with teachers doing occasional, occasional live lessons and one-to-one -one office hours. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing CCPS. At one point, uh, you were you and one other school division were the only two school divisions that were serving students uh, as a part of our MOP program. 
I see we have additional information in the chat, Amy. We do. Uh, we have some information from Prince Edward and Caroline County that uh, partner with Virtual Virginia. Same with Portsmouth. I hope I said oh, that I, right. <laughs> yes, yes. Jennifer Thomas, thank you. Virtual Virginia. All right, so let's bring up a poll. This first poll will be for school division staff. And then we have another poll for MOP staff. So we're gonna to try to segment the information depending on the question. So let's see if we can launch this poll here. So those of you who are within school divisions. Thank you for participating. We see an increase in responses now. So it looks like we're at 50%, Reg. Yes. Oh, a little bit, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And this poll is just for discussion purposes so that Dr. Foley and I can get a sense of within our participation on this webinar today, what kinds of responses we have related to virtual programs. All right, so we have about 60% of folks who have responded and I am going to share the results in just a moment. We'll close the poll in another few seconds. All right, so in this first question, when we ask, do you operate a local virtual program? And that's within your school division that you have successfully created or developed within your school division, a virtual program where you provide the teacher and the instructional content. And so 80% of you said, no, we know that the other 20%, we, uh, we thank you for those, we know, how difficult it is and the challenges of creating your own program. But we know that those of you who don't have a program are utilizing the services that we provide in Virginia. So the second question was, do you enroll students in one of our VDOE approved multi-division online provider? And so those of you who are multi-division online providers, you can see that we do uh, appreciate taking advantage of services provided. Do you enroll students in virtual Virginia program? Of course, we want to support our program in Virginia with 85% of you saying yes. Do you allow students to enroll in full-time programs and not attend school in person? And this is, this is uh, really 90% uh, say yes. Uh, so we appreciate that flexibility and dedication to meet student needs by allowing them to enroll in programs? Do you have a specified time and lab space for students? So 60% of you said yes, during the school day, we do provide that. 
which is great for students to have a safe place within school to complete their courses. And do you allow students to leave school? Uh, I think that depends on the grade level, especially for high school. Maybe juniors and seniors may have the opportunity um, because they have they are able to drive, whereas uh, younger students may not. So thank you for participating uh, in that poll. And we've shared the results. Now, let's see. Uh, huh. Let's get the mop. Mop, there are only three questions for mops. Those of you who are participating, um, do you enroll students full-time? And we already had one example of a mop who said yes. Do you enroll students on a part-time basis where students are able to take one or more courses? And we've heard that, uh, but we wanna hear from all of you who are multi-division online pro providers. And do you currently work with a Virginia school to provide virtual courses? And of course, we certainly appreciate the services that are provided in Virginia. And I think with the MOPS, thank you for participating. And I'm going to share these results. Overwhelmingly, yes, you do enroll full-time students. And yes, you do, by all means, allow part-time, which is uh, probably a very, um, very good choice for students to be able to take a course if they need it for graduation requirement or just need an additional elective or student choice, so we appreciate that. And then are you working with school divisions? We appreciate you, 71% of you said yes, that you are. I, I think 100% said yes on that yes. one. Seven out of seven. <laughs> So thank you for participating in that poll. And what we'd like to do is, uh, if you will indicate in the chat some additional topics that you would like to see covered in future webinars, we certainly would want to try to accommodate presenting material. We have an exciting webinar. Our next webinar uh, is exciting that we're trying to bring in some special guests to talk about how to be productive online, which these tips, these strategies, these best practices uh, would help all of you as you implement virtual programs. So please indicate in the chat any additional topics that you would like to see uh, Dr. Foley and I bring to you uh, in the way of these professional development webinars. As you continue to add to the chat, we have a commitment to continue to expand our professional learning community with all of you participating and be, be sure that we continue to expand our, uh, our enrollment for these webinars so that we are communicating to all school divisions and all multi-division online provider staff. Are there any questions? Uh, and as you, again, continue to add any additional topics, uh, Dr. Foley? Yes, I see that um, Beth added student engagement and that's wonderful. We have actually um, looked into that one for maybe number six or potentially number seven already. So we are on the same page, Beth. That is something we definitely um, are looking into and know is, is critical 
for virtual learning success. And then I see creative ways to get parents to pay attention to school communication. That's that's always critical as well. So thank you for sharing um, those ideas with us. We definitely want to hear from you, our stakeholders, so that we can um, develop these to make them meaningful and helpful for you. So thank you for sharing. Okay. Are there others? I'm seeing an echo um, of student engagement and then addition counseling for virtual learning. Interesting, very great topic that we could um, potentially explore. Engaging parents for better two-way communication. Again, hearing that communication um, is key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you for noting those. Ready, I see another one that popped up from Stephanie, uh, student support and student interventions. Okay. Excellent, thank you for that. Thank you so much for these suggestions and we will do our best to try to focus on some additional material and uh, best practices for you. On behalf of our virtual team, we thank you for participating today. And uh, Dr. Foley, do you have departing words? I see Dr. Alban has joined us. Yes, we again, thank you for, for joining us and thank you for participating. This is the first time we were trying out the poll feature in Zoom and it worked very well. And um, thank you and for the wonderful ideas for our future professional learning opportunities. We are having just a wonderful time creating them and watching participation grow. And again, um, we know we've taken you there before to um, our professional learning site where we do have all the recordings of these webinars so that you may refer back to them. And in addition, if you have someone in your division that's not getting communications that you think would want to know about these, please feel free to um, email Reggie or myself or both of us, and we can add that person to the list. Excellent. Thank you. Dr. Alvin? No, I was just jumping in. I apologize for showing up at the last moment. I'm literally surfing meetings today. I had <laughs> three scheduled that way. So just thank you to Megan Reggie for hosting this, but particularly to all of you. Um, I know Megan Reggie have done a spectacular job of providing support and professional learning when it comes to um, the needs of connecting school divisions and providers as well as that which is appropriate in the state and thank you all for being there being willing to listen but also um, providing good feedback to help us drive um, these opportunities to make them more beneficial for you which is absolutely going to help everyone so for me thank you for that and uh, look forward to working with you more Excellent. Thank you all for your participation today. And we extend to you our best wishes for a great school year. And if we can be of any service, please don't hesitate to call on us.